In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the software to categorize your calls so that you'll be able to develop themes and use the themes to address the research question that you have. As you know, QDA Minor Light is a free software that you can use to analyze your qualitative data. In my previous video, I've shown you how to develop codes. So the next step is to show you how to categorize your codes so that you'll be able to develop themes and use the themes to address your research question that you have. I'm going to show you how to start the categorization. So as you can see here, uh, we have all our codes here under the research question one and also under the research question two. The research question one is about the causes of burnout and the research question two is about the solution of burnout. And these are the codes under the cause and these are the ones under the solution. So what you have to do is to categorize the codes. In terms of categorization, you can do it inside QDA Manolite, or you can do it outside. I prefer doing it outside because, you know, you have the liberty to evaluate each of the codes and then see how you can group them based on the relationship. So I always advise students to do the categorization outside the software. And then when you get the themes, you bring the themes inside the software, and then you can merge the codes onto their respective themes. So let me show you the first step here is to export your codes. How do you export your codes? You go to analyze and click on coding frequency. So what you have to do is to click here to select all of the codes because you want to export all of them. And then you can click on okay and you click on search. So this is what you can see. So here you can see that we have codes under the first research question and the codes under the second research question and they also the count. So the counts are the significant information connected to each of the codes that you have. And also the cases are the number of participants connected to the code or the number of the documents connected to a specific code. You can also click on table so that you can see everything well. When you click here, it gives you all the codes. When you click on this one, to, it puts everything in a table for you. The next step is for you to save. So you click on the save icon here and then you give it a name. So let's give codes generated. I will save it on my desktop. You can save it in any place that you want. And then you click on save and click on yes. You see under the categories, think about category as maybe the research question. So these are showing you the various research questions and also the corresponding quotes. So all these quotes here are for research question one, all these quotes here are for research question two, the solution, right? So the next step is to create a table. You open Microsoft Word. So let me open a Microsoft Word here. And you can put it in landscape because you're going to create a, a table, a large one. And then you can bring your research question. The first one that we're going to look at is the causes of burnout. And then what you have to do is to create a table. So you go to insert, you create a table. If you have two rows and about four to five columns are fine. The columns are like clusters, all the number of themes that you're going to have. In the initial stage, you can think about having maybe six themes. It, can, it could be five. You can add more themes, but I think working within four to six themes to be wonderful, right? So now what we have to do is to type cluster one here, and then the second one will be cluster two. So each column will have a group of codes that will be put there and each column will be called cluster. So we have cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, and then we have, we can have cluster five and six because now we don't know the number of themes that we're going to create. For now, I'm making five clusters. So the next step is to, what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the codes that you have into this table. So how are you going to do that? You know, thinking about the relationship between the codes, you're going to group them based on how they are related, right? So if they are related, something brings them together, you put them under one cluster. So you just go through, you copy, and then paste it in table that you have. 
So the first one is having long hours. So we can copy that. So let me show you what I'm doing here. You just copy and then paste it here. Why are we pasting the first cluster? Because nothing is there, right? So you can start with the first cluster and paste it there. You can put the bulletin thing there. So having long hours. So the next one, the next one that we are looking at having numerous work-related tasks. Having long hours and having numerous work-related tasks, I think they have some connection. When you have numerous work to do, there's high probability for you to spend a lot of time. So that's why I put them under one cluster. So based on the relationship between the code, if they have something in common, you can put it there in one cluster. So, and another thing that you have to think about is there's a flexibility here. As we are going on and then maybe you change your mind that, okay, I think this one belongs to cluster two or I think it best fits cluster two or three, you can move that code there. Always have to also think about a research question too, right? We are thinking about the causes of burnout. So you select, there's no work family balance. So it has nothing to do with the long hours. So you can bring it to the second cluster. So when you realize that it doesn't belong to any of the clusters, that you put it in a new cluster, right? So that's how you're going to do it. So it's all about sorting, grouping them based on the relationship. And then after that, you'll be able to know the number of classes that you have. So the next one here is less time for themselves and family. So less time for themselves and family could be with this one, right? So they have something in common. When you have a lot of things to do at work and you are stressed out, most of the time you may not have time for the family. So I think that they can be part of the second cluster. So you go to the next one, working harder than counterpart. I think that working harder than counterpart belongs to a new cluster. It doesn't have any strong connection with the codes under cluster one or the codes under cluster two. So I put it under cluster three. I've already created the table, so I'm bringing the information here so that to be easier. So these are the codes belonging to cluster one. For cluster four, these are the ones that belong to cluster four. As you can see here at the end, we have grouped them into four clusters, so we don't need the last two columns. So I'm going to delete that. The next step is to look at the content or the code under each of the cluster. And based on that, you can give a label, right? So you are providing a label based on what you see or the content of the cluster that you have. So based on this information, we can label it as having high workload. So the next one uh, label that you have to give to the second one is about having less time with family. And the next one will be putting in extra effort. And the last one will be being new to the profession. Just want to make sure that you understand this process. Categorization is all about looking at the characteristics of each of the codes and then see whether there is a relationship between some of them. And if they have there is a relationship, consider bringing them together and put them under one cluster, right? After putting them in the various clusters, then the next one is to label the cluster. And that label will then be called theme. So at the end, we have four themes addressing the first research question. We're going to do the same thing for the second research question, the same process. When you finish, then we go back to the software. What we're going to do is we're going to create themes under the first research question. And then we move on and merge the quotes here onto the themes. So let me show you how we're going to do it. Let's go back to the software. Before you do it, you have to save a copy of this project. 
The reason why you have to save a copy of this project is that when you start merging the calls onto their respective themes, you cannot get back to the course again. In order not to lose the course, you have to save this project and give it a different name so that at the end of the day, you already have the original course there in case you want to go back or in case you want to show people the quotes that you got, right? Because as I said, if you don't save, you're going to lose all the quotes. So what you're going to do is that you're going to create a new project and use that new project and work on it and bring all the themes into the new project. And you're going to give it a different name. So when you do the save us, it means that you are not going to work on original project. You're going to work on the project with the new name. So you just type project for the themes, right? And you indicate where you want to save that information and then you click save. So you see here projects for the themes, right? So now we have the original project there on your computer. This one, we're going to do it for only the themes. As I said, when you do this, you are going to eliminate all the codes because you're going to merge the code onto the themes. So how are you going to do that? First, you have to bring all the themes inside this software. What you're going to do is right click on the research question one and then click on add code, right? So when you do that, you see that the research question one is here. And what you're going to do here is to bring the first theme here. And then in parentheses, you type theme so that it shows on this place that it's a theme. It's not part of the code, just to differentiate this one from the other one. And then you click on add. When you do that, you find it here. So you do that for the next theme. You do that for the third theme. You do one for the last theme. So now you have all the themes here, right? So the next one is the merging. So what you have to do is that you look at the table that you did, right? And then use it to help you to do the merging. You can start from the first code. So having long hours, you right click on it and then go to merge, right? Merge. And then you look for the themes that you have to merge it, this one into. So what do you have to think about is uh, this one is belongs to having high work load. So I click on that and I click on OK. And it's reminding you, are you sure you want to merge having long hours into having high work load, right? So if you agree to that, you click on Yes. So you see here that we don't have that information here anymore. I'm talking about the code. So you do the same thing for the second one. You right click on it. You go to merge code. And then this one also belongs to having high workload. You click on that and want to make sure. So you click on the yes. And so that's how you're going to do. You are merging all the code into their respective theme. So this one, no work family balance. So I think it's this one, having less time for family. You click on OK and click on Yes. And then you do the same thing for the second research question, the same process. So let me show you the final product. So as you can see here, now we have all the themes and we don't have the course anymore for this project. We have all the themes here under their respective research question, right? And another thing that I did not indicate is that when you can go to edit here for the research question, just to be sure that this is research question one or two. So research question one, and then you click on okay, right? You do the same thing for the research question to right click on it, you go to edit, and then click here, research question two and then click on OK. That's all about the categorization. The next video will be developing tables and figures. I'm going to show you how to develop tables. I'll show you how to extract information that will help you to present your findings. Thank you so much for your time.